So this machine beside me, the Ice Tone 45, this is one of our dual machines that can blast with ice or dry ice. If you come in closer, we'll take you on a bit of a tour of the machine and show you a little bit about how it works. Come on, bring the camera, bring this a virtual tour, let's get you nice and close. Come on, keep coming. There we go, all right. So you can see on the control panel here, very simple, easy use. We have an on-off button. We have uh, a dial that can determine your pounds per minute. We have an air gauge, which is an in-gauge, and then this is outbound air, your emergency stop, your hour meter, and then of course your regulator so you can choose how much air you want to blast at a time. So we press the on button here. The panel lights up, we're good. You can push it into dry ice mode by easily hitting this button. That changes some of the internal mechanisms in the machine, so the dial still runs from a low to a high of dry ice, and the machine runs a little bit slower and compensates for using that different type of media. But for this, we'll turn the dry ice button off, and then we'll just blast with ice today. You see with the hopper door, easily, you can lift it up, you can look down, and let's bring the camera in, there we go. You can look down, you can see, so this is the crusher that crushes the ice into smaller particles of ice. So when you drop some ice in, which I'll do right now, see, you can zoom back, here's a bag of ice, it even says ice on it, there we go. So I'll zoom back in so you can see, the dumper in, you can see how the ice See how the ice falls in? Well, right now, what the crusher does is as it spins forward, which is spinning this way, it crushes the ice up into about the size of a grain of rice. And what that does is it goes through the hose, you're blasting all these little tiny pieces of crunched up ice. We'll dump this in for now. We have door sensors here. This is a security measure so that you can't start the machine unless this is closed. So we'll close that up. Now we'll come down and let's look at make sure all of our connections are good. So we have our, our on our little side panel here, you can see this is the ice out, which is the blue hose, and this is the air in. You also have a bleed valve here and you have your trigger cable. So we'll do one more walk around the machine, make sure everything's good. Now what we'll do is let's go fire up the air compressor and uh, we'll start blasting. What we usually do, we just turn the air compressor on, we'll go outside and show you in a minute. But usually you wear double ear protection. So you can see I have these ones and then I have a big set. So let's throw these in and then we'll go outside and we'll show you the air compressor. Follow me. This is, of course, a much bigger air compressor than you really need to have. We can actually put this on a robot. We partnered with KUKA. 
So that's another option, so we can offer that type of automation, customization for any type of system you want. So if you come close to the control panel here, this is how you bring air into the machine. So right now, we make sure it's on. Pretty simple, you know it's powered on when it's lit up like this. You pop out the air control and you see Oh, you pop out the air control, and as you see, we can start to turn up the air volume. So what we'll blast is at 100 PSI today. 100 PSI is most plants, most air compressors, you can run on 100 PSI. So that's a good base so that you can see some of the performance right now. What we'll do is we'll blast, uh, when we look here at the uh, amount, we'll go to three, maybe three and a half pounds of ice per minute, of course. One of the things that you can do with ice, because it's so much more cost effective than using dry ice, you can blast with more of it, uh, you can clean faster with it, of course it doesn't create any airborne contaminants. There we go. It doesn't create any airborne contaminants and so that's critical because usually when you're blasting with let's say dry ice, you need to do full containment on whatever you're blasting in negative air. Well that can be a big issue because it, it adds uh, another level of uh, worker health and safety concerns. So with ice, we produce 0.003 micrograms per cubic meter. That's virtually nothing. So you can blast an open area like this, you can remove lead paint, asbestos in open area, based on the air quality reports that we have that are also currently available to you. So let's fire up now. Does our camera operator have her goggles on or ear protection? Yes, she does, okay. So you can see if you want to zoom in here, maybe you want to take a close up. Do you want to, do you want to go in closer so you can actually see it? I won't blast for a sec. Our camera operator is wearing white today, so she's a little bit concerned about getting dirty. But you know what? As long as she stands behind me, she actually won't get dirty at all because we don't actually have a huge plume of blasting around us. So why don't you just come behind me right here nice and close, you're not gonna get dirty at all, and then we'll give this thing a go. All right, can you see it? So what's important to note here is look at the plume of what you're blasting and it doesn't really come behind you, it shoots it all forward. You can actually see there's ice here and what this ice is doing is it's actually capturing the contaminant that you're blasting to hold it really tight in there and that's how you can tell that there's no airborne contaminants. So we'll finish off cleaning this and you'll see there'll be a little bit of ice but for the most part it'll be spotless. some wood. A lot of people like to clean fire damage off of wood and we have a variety of nozzles. We have wider nozzles, we have nozzles that have pins in them to make smaller particles. What I want to show you is this is our most aggressive nozzle on a piece of wood. So this, to show you the power, it won't it won't give a nice finish like other nozzles will, but you can see how aggressive it is when you have a powerful nozzle on wood. So have a look at that. Look how deep that goes. You just cut right through wood, and what that means and what that shows is you can cut through a lot of stuff really, really fast. What we'll do before we blast the rubber, you can see we can turn it down. Turn it down here. And then you'll be able to see us blast the rubber without actually damaging it 
which is important when you're looking at things like motors, where you're doing rubber gaskets and seals and hoses, you can go all around it without actually doing damage on it. And it's a special characteristic of ice. So we have lots of users in the field that are actually using ice that are blasting engines for things like inspections or maintenance or things like that, removing the grease and oil off of it. is that you blast at low pressures with using less ice, it's really easy. You just turn it up and then you can turn it down and you're good to go. Ice isn't really meant, if you look at what's on top of us now, ice isn't really meant to clean any of this. Ice can like um, this type of really hard rust. Ice can remove corrosion, it can remove flaky rust. And there are people that have found applications in that. It can remove road paint, things like that. But, you know, if you're gonna remove rust like this, you're gonna have to add an enhancement to your ice, something we're working on, we're developing. But right now, ice isn't meant for removing deep, deep rust. Ice is meant for cleaning. And there's millions of applications ice can be cleaned for. So if you have any questions, you have any thoughts, we have a wonderful sales team. We have a wonderful help support desk. We can answer any questions, we can do any types of other demos, you send it to us and we're good to go. Thanks for watching and thanks for coming to our virtual demo.